prepared to get by Squadron Hawk, to get by Timely Reinforcements tokens. Um, one thing that is interesting about, uh, about Samuel Barth deck, though, is that he actually has two copies of Mental Misstep in his main deck. He's not playing Spell Pierce, yeah. which is a, a, a relatively unusual choice, but one that could potentially serve him very well in this matchup. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a card you normally bring in against Mono Red. You get their Goblin Guide on the first turn, and it can be absolutely huge. So it still looks like Sam won the dice roll here, led on Seachrome Coast, and passed the turn. And uh, Charles is leads on a mountain, like a Fetchland Probably mountain. Probably fetching Gavinia Shuffling, yes. So, uh, and he's at 19, so... <laughs> Uh, so Gindy here, you know, he obviously wants to have a Goblin Guide, and he that does. it is, and it gets, it gets oh, this step. And that's the play. And that, that's what we were just talking about, you know, how powerful it is to be able to stop the, the Goblin Guide in turn one, even even stopping a Lava Master in turn one, anything that's going to you know, get the, the red deck on the board before you have a chance to uh, develop develop your own. And uh, Squadron Hawk turn two comes down for, uh, for Samuel Barth. And uh, that's that's you know a pretty big deal. Squadron Hawk's one of the really important cards to allow the Cobblade deck to put pressure on Mono Red, so they can't just you know uh, draw the game out and and you know be able to ultimately just win with burn spells. And that's pretty much the ideal start is you know to be able to turn one misstep their one drop followed by Squadron Hawk out of Cobblade deck. I, not much more you could ask for oh, than absolutely. that. I mean he didn't even have to pay life. He was able to, to pay, <laughs> pay blue mana to counter. He's sitting here at 20 life uh, with with the Hawk in play and more in hand. So a uh, a very good start for the game for Cobblade. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, that Goblin Guide would have dealt probably four points of damage this turn, potentially six or eight points over the next couple turns. And I mean, yeah, not Keeping, just keeping off. Goblin Guide off the table is, is extremely important because it allows it allows uh, the Cobblade player to, to if they want to, just use uh, use Squadron Hawk to get, just gain life. Uh, if Goblin Guide was in play, he, he, could, he could jump block, whatever, but like he's, he's just behind. He's taking damage each turn, and it, it turns each of uh, each of Guinea's removal spells into effectively searing blazes. Right. Yeah. You know, anytime you know, if he tries to double block or if he you know holds back uh, to to you know be able to try to protect himself with hawks. And here, you know, he's actually the one on the on the aggressive. Guinea's down to 17. Uh, Sam has two hawks in play, and while that shrine of burning rage threatens to be very dangerous if the game goes long. You know, the Hawks are going to have something to say about whether that goes long. It's a good one to draw, Forked Bolt. Yeah, Forked Bolt with that Shrine in particular powers up the Shrine and gets both those Hawks down. And uh, Lava Mancer comes down, also going to help keep Hawks off the board. That was a very nice Forked Bolt. That was the one of Edward Charles' deck. And there's a Dismember from Sandbar to get rid of that Lava Mancer. Um, so the one Forked Bolt knocks down those two Hawks, which is huge. And Let's see. There are two into the Royals in Sandbarth's deck, but there aren't a lot of other ways to stop that. Shroud of Burning Rage. In fact, there are no spell skites, nothing. So to be fair, uh, Sam is at 20 life still, so it's going to take a while before that shrine is all that all that threatening. 16 after the dismember, but uh, yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, Sam plays plays a squadron hawk, but he's stuck on three land. Uh, Sam is is playing the uh, what has sort of become industry standard, the phantasmal image Sun Titan version of Cobblade. Uh, he doesn't have he doesn't have Hero Blade Holder. He doesn't have Blade Splicer. He has the uh, he has a Merry Angel for a sort of mid-game, and then the, the sort of biggest of late games with, with Titan <laughs> image. Uh, you know, that said, that the, the Titan version needs a lot more mana to operate than you know, some of the hero version. If, he, if he's sitting here stuck on land for, for very long, he's not really going to be able to do very much. Right, and Sam playing 27 lands, but still manages miss, miss his fourth land drop. Shows you how mana-hungry this deck is. You want all the lands you can get between your Tectonic Edges, Colonnades. I guess he, he has no Inkmoth Nexus, but the list with Nexus definitely want it. So uh, this, Sam finds his fourth land, cracks a Misty Rainforest, drops down to 15. And uh, maybe we'll see double hawk here. And while... Two hawks are already dead, so... Oh, so a Mirror Angel? A Mirror Angel would be, you know, the... I mean, it's not clear you actually would want to play a Mirror Angel here. It, it, it's just going to die. Guinea has a fistful of cards. I would say he has like three cards in hand, actually. But uh, yeah, he, would, he would at least, I, I would imagine, want to get some sort of value out of his, out of his Angel. There, a Jace... Jace Blarin, now that he has double blue. And Sam just opts to minus one draw card. Jace Blarin's a card that a lot of people uh, a lot of people misevaluate in, in a matchup like this. A lot of people think, well, they can just they can just burn your Jace, how good can it possibly be? I mean that's that's like cycling a renewed phase. For those of you who uh, who who weren't playing, renewed <laughs> phase was a, was a big deal. Renewed phase was a card that uh, you could cycle for white and one, and when you cycled it you gain two life, when you cast it, hard cast it you gain six life. And it was actually a, a super popular card in control decks, just because it was a card that you know could give you this this minor value against against aggressive decks by you know giving life when you cycled it, or potentially you know gaining a lot of life if you actually just hard cast it. 
Jace Balaran in a matchup like this will often draw you a card and save you two damage. So it's very similar if it just dies to cycling or a new phase. Granted, and it's a bit more expensive than you have to cast it during your main phase, but it's still just a fine effect. Charles goes for Incinerate in Sam's end step, notably just throwing it at Sam, it looks like. Yeah, and this, this it looks like it's going to be a Chandra's Phoenix if he's having three mana here. It could be Stagger Shock. He could be Stagger Shocking uh, Sam. Oh, yeah, there's Stagger okay. Shock. Just going to up that shrine. and Although, I mean, Charles hasn't done a ton. That shrine just going to get so big so fast. Um, I think it's really interesting. You can play Jace a lot of different ways in this matchup. You can plus two him a lot of the time and just, you know, give them one card once and then just, you know, force them to use that card to deal with him plus another card. You get up on cards. You can use it on the minus one renewed faith mode. A lot of options. Uh, if you look, uh, Gindy, Gindy is not attacking. He's not hitting Jace here. He's actually you know, sending all this damage straight to the face. Yep. Which, I mean, it makes complete sense given that he has that shrine in play. Uh, a lot of people, I think, make the, make the mistake of trying to fight Jace always. They yep. always attack down Jace. They always, you know, b burn Jace. They are just, you know, far too aggressive when it comes to... Oh, and there's an Oblivion Ring. That, uh, that's going to seriously reduce the power of that, of that shrine. Consider he's totally gone. <laughs> Off to Oblivion. <laughs> Very much reduced the power of that shrine. Yeah, and now uh, Second Squadron Hawk comes down for uh, Sam. What, what Charles wants here is an Anarchy to kill both Hawks <laughs> and the Oblivion Ring. But that hasn't been legal for a long, long time. So he gets to... Uh, Replay his his stagger shock here goes to the face. Sam down to eight life. Gindy, you know, in, in, in much more need of gas now that that shrine is gone. Yeah, I mean that stagger shrine again. That shrine was nearly lethal, right? I couldn't tell how many counters I think it was were on up it. To seven counters, six. It was all, it was one die, so it was probably about six counters. Yeah. So uh, Sam down to six life now. Charles still not out of it by any means, but uh, certainly going to work. Have to work for it a little bit without that shrine there. Sam is going to throw away the Jace, give himself another card out of it. Pretty good deal, three cards off that Jace. Sort of like a, a concentrate on suspend. <laughs> like an Aeon Chronicler, something weird like that. All right, uh, S Sam serves him for two. We'll drop Charles's life down to 11. And here comes Gideon Jura. Now that card, that's a huge card against the red decks. Granted, Charles doesn't have many creatures, so it doesn't as good as it could have been, but uh, still Hero of Oxid Ridge is nullified now, and he can turn that into 8 damage next turn. Goes back to the face. Yep, Stagger Shock back to Sam. Stam drops to uh, four, 4. I believe. Yep, 4 life. And, oh, a Lava Mancer. <laughs> I think he, I mean, this is, this is potentially, no, he's not, not trying to draw out a, uh, a misstep. So Sam can just ship his Gideon in, the, in this turn. Putting, although it, he, he may he may actually just want to keep it up. If he attacks with his two hawks, he puts Charles down to times a nine life, um, and then he's still actually not not lethal next turn unless he activates Gideon as a creature. I mean, it looks like Sam's hand is full of lands in a day of judgment. He does he does protect himself from Chandra's Phoenix by uh, ticking up on Gideon. Right. This looks like I don't think he's just daying. Interesting, okay. Just staying away. It seems like you would you would have dayed and then activated getting an attack or yeah, something that, like I that. Mean, you're, you're putting, you're putting uh, Char uh, Charles dead next turn if you do it that way. This way, you give him additional draw step. And I mean, that draw step is, is potentially very, very dangerous. Right, know? yeah. Well, w worked out pretty well for... Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, did he not? Did he not Gideon? move Gideon up? Gideon, what just happened? <laughs> Wait. What? Okay. Well, so he didn't use Gideon. Well, all right. He ticked up Gideon. I thought I thought that I moved up. But, I mean, it's uh, also possible that he did, and he just conceded. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, I was gonna say it worked out well for Sam, but apparently not. <laughs> right. Apparently, it didn't work out nearly <laughs> as well as we thought for him. Uh, <laughs> very strange. All right. Well, uh, so going to the sideboards here, uh, let's look at uh, Gindy's list first. So we're talking about Combust as a card he could potentially bring in. Maybe. I, I mean, I, I honestly think that Gindy does not sideboard. I agree. I think he changes no cards. Uh, he hasn't seen anything like like spell scout out of his opponent's deck. He hasn't even seen a sword. I mean, one of the cards that you possibly bring in here is Manic Vandal. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, Sam's deck actually has no targets for Manic Vandal. He has he has no spell scouts. He has no swords. Um, so, you know, bringing in Manic Vandal would just would just be bringing great opener. Um, so, 
the uh, the uh, the other cards in the sideboard you might want. I mean, dismember. There's really just nothing. Yeah. So I, I, if I were if I were Gindy, I would go to my sideboard to make it look like I had something, <laughs> and then just present, which is what I imagine he's probably doing. Yeah. I, I, Salmon has a lot of sideboard cards. Yeah, I mean, so four time of was 100% coming yes. in. Um, and then after that, you could go for, he's got four flasheries, two dispel, a day of judgments that are all options. Even Azure Mage isn't the worst if you want to block a goblin guide if you're on the play. Although, it's, I mean, so you can get Searing Blaze and stuff right, like that. Yeah. I mean, the, the cards in his deck that are, that are relatively weak, uh, Flash Freeze is, 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 is better than Mana Lake, clearly. Um, although it can't stop the Shrine. Uh, he has Oblivion Ring and Into the Royal. I think I keep both of those just because you need ways to deal with Shrine, and, and neither of them are that bad at stopping creatures. Even an Unkick Into the Royal on, you know, Goblin Guide against Teetering Peaks can save you a lot of life. Day of Judgment's pretty bad here. They, as we saw in that game, Day of Judgment, you know, traded two of his Hawks in the Day <laughs> of Judgment for a Grim Lava Mancer. Yep. Uh, Gindy's playing, well, Gindy, he doesn't know that Gindy has Hero. He hasn't seen Gindy actually cast Hero. Sure. Uh, Hero's become fairly standard in red decks. Yeah. Um, so he may he may keep in some number of Day of Judgment. Uh, Dismember is, is a, Dismember's a weird card in this matchup. It, it's Dismember's very strange. a card that can save you a lot of life if you kill a Goblin guy that you wouldn't have an answer for, but it's also a card that is costing you life against a deck that's goal is to burn right. you. And if you draw it in a late game, it's just a dead draw, you know. The Phantasmal uh, images, I think, are, are, are among the weaker cards. I, I think year. likely Mana Leak will also come out, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Mana Leak, uh, Phantasmal Image. Uh, I mean, do you want how many creatures do you want to cut? Do you want to cut some of your Planeswalkers? Do you want all your Gideons, for sure? Do you want Jace Balaren? Or do you I, want I to keep think, renewed faith? I think Jace Balaren is pretty good here. Granted, when if he's bringing in four timely reinforcements, he just has much more powerful things to cast on turn three. Right. Um, so you, know, he, he, you have to pay attention to your mana curve pretty, pretty carefully. Sun Titan is another card that's like pretty bad here. Super slow. You, you need to be able to kill your opponent. Uh, but having Sun Titan and Gideon, seems like Gideon is just generally, Gideon and Colin are generally just enough to kill them, and that you don't need access to Sun Titan. So I think if were I sideboarding here, I would consider taking out uh, the two Phantasmal Images, the two Sun Titans, and the four Mana Lakes for four Flash Freeze and four Timely Reinforcements. Yep. I, I think that's pretty much how I do it too. I don't think you could bring in Dispel. I don't think you could really bring in anything else. You just have so many cards to take out, and that's one of the issues I think players have, where you have a lot of cards you could bring in, but you just you can't over sideboard. You right. just you know you're playing all these cards you don't necessarily need. Um, it looks like Sam did just forget to take up Gideon that turn. So yeah, he just he just didn't use it. Yeah, that's that's the, the information we have. Wow. So. <laughs> all right. Uh, awkward, especially because he, he timed it right with the Day of Judgment yeah, and everything he, too. He just Wow, <laughs> I just sort of assumed he had used it, so... Yeah, well, so, so much for that. I bet Sam's probably kicking himself a little over that one. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, that's, yeah, that's definitely a... Uh, that's definitely you know, one, of those, one of those little things that, you know, can, can certainly cost you. There, there, it's very easy to, to you know, have a plan in your head and just sort of forget part of it. <laughs> and, I mean, seriously, though, I, I, I remember, it, you know, in, in Worlds 2002, I was playing... Uh, I was playing Car uh, Carlos Fermel, who was the eventual world champion for top eight. <laughs> and uh, I just didn't Marari my Haunting Echoes, and he countered it. And he didn't even think anything of it. I just you know, cast Haunting Echoes, he envelops it, we go on. And I'm sitting there like, I had Marari in play, a million <laughs> mana. Because I had you know, coffers in like eight swamps or something. You know, if I, if I, if I just say Marari it, it's totally different. But my, my brain just, you know, just snapped you sk skip that and step. just didn't do it. You just had these tiny I mean, mental you know, relapse. I mean, Sam clearly had a plan there. Yeah, otherwise, he would have, you know, he would have then attacked. If he, had, if he hadn't planned to, uh, to to tick up his Gideon to save himself from exactly that. <laughs> so. Reminds me of uh, Grand Prix Atlanta, same place earlier this year, where uh, LSV, in a feature match, was playing fairies. What, play <laughs> yeah, played Creeping Tarpet on turn one, turn two, thoughts he's returning his opponent's hand, and then it didn't do anything. And Sam Black is watching, he's like, I don't understand how could anybody possibly do that, that's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> and then two rounds later in a feature match, Sam Black does the exact same just thing. Just, just goes, thoughts, uh, Creeping Tarpet, thoughts he's right down your hand, and go. Forgets to play a land. That's pretty. Uh, so that's pretty hilarious. It is easy to make those small mistakes. However, I would recommend not making them. Right, so we're we're back for game two. Players are sideboarded. Uh, Sam starts off with a planes that is not going to let him pay the the mana cost on mental misstep, but uh, he will get a an island for his troubles from that attacking goblin guy. Yep, and looks like uh, no mental misstep from Sam. So the goblin guy comes down, gives Sam a land, and see if Sam has the turn two squad or not here. The cards that you're looking for in your hand in this matchup, if you're the Cobblade player, are like Timely Reinforcements, uh, Mental Misstep, maybe a Removal Spell, Squadron Hawk. So I'd imagine you probably kept a hand with Timely Reinforcements in it. 
mostly timely reinforcements. That's the, <laughs> the yeah, most that... the most important card. But I mean, if, you know, if we if we look at the uh, if we look at the, the the build of Gindy's deck and the the build of a lot of the the red decks that have been successful recently, you know, cards like Chandra's Phoenix, cards like Hero of Oxen Ridge do a lot to uh, significantly blunt the impact of timely reinforcements. Right. Uh, Grimlob Mancer down for Charles Gindy, and Sam has the flash race. race. Okay. So unsurprisingly, he brought that one in. Let's see if we have a turn three reinforcements for Sam here. And t three mana. Okay, yep, there's a the timely reinforcements. So Charles Gindy will, uh, has more creatures and more life, as red decks usually do. Sam will go up to <laughs> 22, and Sam will get three tokens. So do, do, you, think, do you think they had the, the uh, impact of this card in mind when they named it? <laughs> so people could make that, oh, that timely, that reinforcement sure was timely, you know, when they rip it off the top when they're about to die. It's, it's certainly one of the more appropriate named cards in right, recent Right, it, it really is. It, I mean, it does exactly what the card is supposed to do, uh, yeah. which is always a nice little melding of flavor and function. It's exactly what the card is supposed to do, make players playing beatdown decks <laughs> cry. Because, I mean, it kind of does that. Like, oh, no, not again. So Gindy, I mean, Gindy deciding... Is it even worth attacking here? Uh, this is this is one of those weird spots. Playing a deck with Hero of Oxen Ridge, um, as I have been wont to do in the past few <laughs> months, uh, there, there's you, you often are in the situation where you need to make the decision: Do I attack with my creature that can potentially trade with one of their one power guys, or two of their one power guys, or whatever, or do I wait and try and hero them? Uh, and and it's not necessarily an easy uh, an easy question to answer. Here, Gindy is choosing to hold back and. You know, we don't we don't know the contents of his hand. Maybe he has a hero, uh, but oh, and the shrine gets oblivion ringed. Uh, but if he, I mean, if he attacks, in particular, the fact that he has goblin guide is is a big a big negative to him wanting to attack. Because even if his opponent just chump blocks, even if his opponent just you know block with one, block with one, block with one, that's a lot of goblin guide flips he's getting out of that deal. Yeah, and yeah, like you said, with goblin guide, it's not just the fact that you can trade with it, but the fact that Sam could just draw extra cards. Right, he out doesn't want he doesn't want to you know just give him a bunch of free cards. Yeah. He's already gotten a ton of value from the timely <laughs> reinforcements. He doesn't need to give him any more. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I see a hero in Charles's hand. I think one of the biggest things for Charles here is he, you know he needs to find two more lands to get that down. But uh, I, I I agree with Charles's play of not attacking there. I mean, if you have hero in your hand, a second goblin guide. All right, so he's gonna play a second guy and then attack with both. Uh, reels and a Jace, so Sam will get no advantage off the top of his deck. Is this a dismember? Uh, a dismember yep. one, probably double block the other. I think that's most likely. Or triple or block. Tri yeah, triple block. Makes sense. And that was uh, not what Charles Kindy wanted to see. I mean, the, the thing is, that's not that's not too bad for him. I mean, granted, obviously, he'd, he'd much rather just hit with both Goblin Guides, but uh, he's, he's removed a a dismember from his opponent's hand, which can potentially deal with, with a, th something like a, a hero or a Chandra's Phoenix. That's what he's going to <laughs> Gideon, <Gideon's laughs> Gideon coming down on the other uh. side of, his of the board, and uh, Gideon most likely going to use his abilities each turn this game. Um, <laughs> Sam, very much aware of, of uh, you know, the, the way that the last game played out. So Charles still stuck on two mountains. Yeah, and even if Charles had four lands and a hero here, he would still be in a pretty bad spot. That Gideon is just yeah, I mean, gigantic. He's, he's, he's a bit behind already. It's, <laughs> it's very difficult. Gideon is one of the nightmare cards for Mono Red. It's a card that you know, just, just can soak up so much damage uh, and is very, very difficult to kill. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, unless you have the burn spells to burn them out, it just does so much. Plus, like, you can kill off some of the, you know, like Hero. Like, it's one of the ways you can easily with a Hero of Oxid Ridge. It clears the way. It creates a quick clock in the longer game. It just does so much against the red deck. And, and here yeah, it comes, here, yeah. Just see him smashing in. Yeah, I mean, th this is one of the one of the the most important uh, uses of Gideon is just kill you. <laughs> um, I mean, it's 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 really something you see people hide behind their Gideon so much and get them whittled down when realistically that Gideon can kill their opponent in a few attacks. I mean, I think watching you play Cobblade is really where I started to learn. You just have to be aggressive with this deck so often. You just attack with your Gideons, you attack with your Colonnades, you put them on two-turn clock, and if they don't find exactly what they're looking for, they die. Yeah, I mean, in this situation, Gindy, Gindy is pinched on mana. What is the worst he can do? I mean, what, what, what is Sam afraid of, given that he has the board that he has, and Gindy has two land? Right, exactly. I mean, a lot of players, I think, I agree, would just take up Gideon. I, I feel protected, I like this little tor tortoise shell I'm in, but when you attack with the Gideon, uh, you just, you know, put Charles on a couple-turn clock, and... I mean, 
one thing that one thing that has changed about Magic in recent years, uh, in particular with the introduction of Planeswalkers, is the importance of being proactive. It's the importance of having a plan that that punishes your opponent for for stumbling, that you know puts pressure on them and, and prevents them from getting to their whatever their long game is. Uh, and, and Gideon is is an example of sort of both ends of that. It protects you against your against your opponent being proactive, it, and it forces your opponent to be proactive to kill it in a lot of situations, <laughs> and it lets you have that proactive uh, plan itself. It's one of the reasons that Gideon is one of the best planeswalkers ever. Yeah. I mean, five mana planeswalkers are usually a, a rough, sea constructed play, but Gideon has a ton of it. It just shows you how powerful he is. He eats the creature, he kills things, makes them attack you, and all of his abilities are utilized by a variety of decks. I think people were very surprised to see it in our, uh, our modern sideboard <laughs> last weekend, <laughs> but it was one of the best cards there. <laughs> I remember we, I was in Sam Black's room testing the poison matchup. We were like, uh-oh, is he going to bring Gideon here? It seems <laughs> awful for us. It was a little too expensive. A little, a little too expensive, but we were worried about you guys just plus twoing it and be like, oh, yeah. this, this is a problem. It's pretty hard for you to beat, though. You have to, I mean, it's another thing you have to bounce. But, uh, oh, man. Yeah, the card is very good. Expected to see played. Play in modern, for sure. It looks like Charles is going to serve in. I think he's attacking Jace here. And Sam is just going to double block the Ember Holler. Mm -hmm. Charles is board three lands Ember Holler versus Sam's Gideon, Hawks, Soldier Token, and Jace. And five land. And five lands, yeah. So uh, Sam blocks, Charles incinerates one of the blockers, essentially two for one Sam. And then Lightning bolts away the Jace Bolero. Working so, hard. So here. He, he, he is left with a, a tapped Ember Hauler, which may, uh, probably won't die to Gideon. Gideon probably more interested in either protecting Sam or killing Charles. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Ember Hauler is of no concern to him. Yeah, although to note, Charles is tapped out right now, so if Sam right, were, so he were couldn't, to He couldn't use it. it, he couldn't use the, uh, the ability to sacrifice it in response. Right. Yeah, I mean, one of the things Gideon does, too, that's really awesome, and that's probably the reason why Charles had to kill Jace, is it protects your other Planeswalkers really right. nicely. Back when uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor... Oh, he is, he is just killing the Ember Hawk. Uh, interesting. Yeah, so just going to play, I guess, a defensive game. There's some more Squatter Hawks. Yeah, back when Jace was legal, that combo was just so unbelievable because you just protect your Mind Sculptor behind the Gideon. Well, Jace, Jace is still legal. He just played one. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> still my, good my, with my that Jace, too. a little different, but yeah, still with that Jace. I love it. Love that. Little I mean, when you could play when you could play Elspeth, Gideon, and James, oh, yeah. that Ooh. was. Whew. Elspeth is another very powerful white. You don't. You don't need to tell me about how I'll get Elspeth. Is <laughs> I, I, I know you guys have a thing. I won't spoil it. Uh, let's see. So two hawks uh, in play for Sam Barth. Gindy draws. Let's see if he finally found his fourth land. If he found it, look, it looks like he drew a Teetering Peaks, which is his fourth land, but not the fourth land he really needs. No, if he if he had a fourth mountain, he could play a, that Oxid Rage, make those. Squadron Hawks and able to block and go right for Gideon, but I mean, he is not he, the case. well. He Gideon, I believe, is at six loyalty, and uh, Sam does have two blue mana open, so or at least two mana open that he can he could cast Flash Freeze or Mana Lake if he still has Mana Lake in his bag. Right. And Charles is going to pass the turn back to Sam. Now we we see all right. Sam's going to tap one and uh, tech edge down that teetering peaks, keeping yeah. Charles off hero hero mana. That's, that's that's definitely a heads-up play. Uh, you, you don't see... Uh, a, a lot of Cobblade players aren't nearly aggressive enough with their tectonic edges. Agreed. Uh, you, one, of the, one of the advantages of, of Cobblade is how it is able to, to be proactive and aggressive. And uh, you know, in, in a situation like this, he's just keeping Charles off of being able to, to cast any of the spells that he's really scared of. Hero of Oxen Ridge. Be able to you know, play something, pay for Mana Lake if he still has Mana Lake. You know, just cast multiple spells a turn. He's, he's obviously in a... Uh, you know, in an advantage position here. He has Gideon in play. He's 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 the the one at higher life total. So he really wants to be able to maintain the uh, uh, aggressive position. Charles uh, sends a bolt of that Gideon in response to it activating, dropping its loyalty down a little bit, but still not enough to kill it. And yeah, and, Charles oh, just packs it, it in. So it looks like we're going to a game three. Yeah, and really, I mean, Sam could have had both those games potentially. Uh, game one likely was going to go in his favor, so I'm sure it's, he's... It's, it's unclear. He was at four life against a red deck, <laughs> so... <laughs> it's true, but if we if we consider two of the cards were uh, Goblin Guide Teetering Peaks, I mean, he was certainly in a good position. But, uh, you know, th that's how this game goes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, now they force the game three. Gindy will be on the play, which is huge, and Sam is really going to want to have Mental Mist up here. Yeah. And, of so course, Timely Reinforcement. Do, do you think that either player wants to sideboard differently based on the fact that... Uh, that a different player is on the play. 
another thing that a lot of people don't really keep in mind when they're sideboarding nearly enough is whether they're on the play or the draw. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's agree. that's something that you know your your deck operates very differently whether you are the one you know who's capable of being the aggressor because you're on the play, or you're the one who's forced to deal with what your opponent is doing because you're on the draw. Right. Uh, that's you know when you know, for instance when, when playtesting matchups, uh, a lot of times you know I'll, I'll end up playing. You know, 10 games where one player's on the play, 10 games where the other's on the play, just because you sideboard differently. Because right. the, the, the cards you're playing, uh, it, it matters so much which player's going first. Yeah, I mean, like, if you've played, especially, I mean, in both control mirrors and especially in beatdown mirrors, where you see it a lot, where one player, like, if you're, if you're in a zoom mirror, say, and someone's on the play, although sometimes it's correct to draw, but mm -hmm. it, if you're on the play, like, you're the aggressor and they have to answer your cards. You go into Cobble on turn one, if you play a Curd Ape on your first turn, uh, then you know they're gonna be able to serve it over your curd ape, and well, you shouldn't have curd ape in your deck to begin with. Come on, man. We're, we're <laughs> talking about good zoo decks here. So. Sure, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, I might be slightly biased. Or you know, or like if you leave, if you're playing like uh, play a noble hierarch on turn one in the zoo deck, and they can't kill it, like you can just get up, you know ahead so quickly. Well, I mean, even even so. even beyond sideboarding, I mean, sideboarding is is one of the more subtle areas. Uh, like a lot a lot of people don't really consider strongly enough how good their hand is if they're on the player draw. Like when you say, do you mulligan this hand? Not enough. You really have to have to qualify that, whether in, in limited or constructed. With do you, do you, do you keep this hand on the play? Do you keep this hand on the draw? Because it's it's a huge you know has a huge impact on the value of certain cards on like how quickly you need to be able to influence the board. You know, a, a, a hand, for instance, in say modern that plays a uh, a turn two Knight of the Reliquary, but doesn't have a turn one play and doesn't have a reactive card. You know that you that you can necessarily play otherwise is. An excellent hand on the play against a lot of decks, but on the draw, it's way too slow. Right. Which which seems crazy to say. <laughs> I mean, which which says a lot about that particular format. But you know, if if you're playing a turn two Knight of the Reliquary against a Storm deck, you're very often dead on their third turn. If you're playing a turn two Knight of the Reliquary on the play, and you have like you know, like say Knight of the Reliquary plus you know Negate Flash Freeze, just for an example, <laughs> if there were of what you might difference. have in your deck. Um, I mean, that's on the play. That's an awesome hand. On the draw, that's terrible. You right. don't do anything. You 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 know you can't actually put like a a, a clock on the board and ha keep mana up. You're never going to be able to play that night of the Royal Quarry. You know, I actually think it's it's you know as far as this, you know, going back to the sideboarding thing, it's so significant that I think night of the Royal Quarry cannot be in your deck after sideboarding wow. because you can't afford to tap three mana on your own turn unless you went first. Right, I mean, it makes sense to I me. Mean, if you're going to be on the draw, you just don't want that card. I think there, there are just a lot of cards that are that way. People don't even think about it. I think one of the biggest ones in standard, and it's even in the matchup in front of us, is just two mana counter spells. Like cards like Manlik and Flash Freeze right. are so much better on the play than when you're on the Absolutely. draw, and especially in a matchup like, like this. If you're on the draw, you can't hold up two mana. You're just behind the gun. You have to react to what they're doing. Well, if you're on the play, maybe you can misstep their one drop and hold up Flash Freeze for turn two. We, we just got a question so. on t Twitter whether whether someone you know you think that that you should board out Goblin Guy whether in the play or the draw. In this matchup, I think Goblin Guide is just too good. Agreed. I don't think you can afford to take out Goblin Guide. But in, say, the Mono Red Mirror, I think it's possible you don't want your Goblin Guides if you're yeah, on the draw. You know, on the play, I don't think you it's, want well, them. Sure. I, I, yeah, that, that, that's entirely possible. That's true. Uh, you know, I, 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 in fact, I would, I would guess that's likely true. There's certainly, certainly a lot of other sort of aggressive matchups where that sort of thing is true. You know, your, say, Step Links. You know, you can't right. afford to have Step Links in your deck if you're on the draw in the Boros Mirror, but it's amazing if you're on the play. Stuff like that, I think, are things that a lot of people don't take nearly enough into account. And speaking of play and draw, and you mentioned the Mono Red Mirror, I think it's pretty interesting. A lot of times in the Mono Red Mirror, it is actually correct to draw if you're uh, if it's going to be an attrition matchup. Well, the uh, years ago when Mono Red was was more more bolts than creatures, uh, which it, you know, the, the versions these days are are getting getting relatively close to, uh, it was certainly it was just a hundred percent correct to draw because you would never kill someone with a jackal pup. You took your jackal pups out of your deck, <laughs> right. you know. Um, these days. I think there's there's a, a little more of an argument for wanting to be on the play. Uh, things like, uh, like Chandra's Phoenix, things like Hero of Oxford Ridge. You know, there there are cards that you you know you could potentially get a, a relatively significant amount of damage in with. You know, getting your shrine on board and ticking up first can matter. Right. You know, being the one who's being proactive with that. Again, I, I haven't played much with Mono Red in the current standard to to you know to know the exact dynamics of the mirror matchup. But I can certainly imagine that, you know, it's, it's entirely possible to draw first. Right, I mean, I think it's an interesting argument. Looks like players are off the races. Charles leads on Aaron Mesa after dropping down to six cards. So Sam plays a turn one Glacial Fortress, and that's often a sign of something. It's rare that you actually want your first land to be Glacial Fortress. Um, so, you know, it's, it's possible that Sam has a hand that is relatively mana light. Um, he certainly, he can't even bluff a, 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 at least mana for a mental misstep. You know, he's been paid to life, but that's substantially worse. So Shrine comes down. 
Uh, a turn two, turn two shrine on the play. He doesn't have a creature, but sh that, sh that shrine threatens to be uh, very, very dangerous if Sam doesn't deal with it. Though we do see an oblivion ring in Sam's hand. So it doesn't tap the fortress usually mean like tectonic edge or... Right. Like, like I mean, his hand could very easily be fortress, fortress, edge. Right. <laughs> or, or, but his, planes. or basic planes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's also possible he just drew that this turn. Right. But, I mean, it, you know, it, it, some, oh, the, the order in which you pay, play your land often says a lot about your hand, and sometimes you actually want to m sort of mix up the, the, the way in which you play your land to, to, if you think your opponent is actually thinking that far ahead of, okay, he probably has this in his hand right. based on that. Right, yeah, you can totally, you can guess a lot of your opponent's plays just solely off of how they play their lands, which is incredible. Uh, and I think a lot of the better players can really do that. Did we, Giddy, did Giddy not, Giddy did not play a third land? You know, no third land, no play that turn. And he's actually, Giddy's at lower life. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler reinforces doesn't do anything. Yeah, no creatures, no uh, no life boost. It's a rough spot. All right, so down comes Hawk Squatter Hawk. Now Giddy needs his own time of reinforcement. Yeah. So Sam will search up his uh, another copy of Squatter Hawk. Uh, as far as the Monterey Mirror goes, I talked to Glenn Jones, who uh, does coverage for us. He played it at Grand Prix Pittsburgh, May Day 2, and he said he, whenever he played the Mono Red Mirror, he shows to draw, and he felt like, like it was a, a good I mean, I think that, that absolutely makes sense. So it looks like Gindy found his third land. Yep, so there we go. There's land number three. So, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. He must... I, I would guess he has a Chandra's Phoenix in his hand, just based on the fact that he kept this hand. And... No, it's a Stagger Shock. Kills the Squatter Hawk. I think I might have seen three Incinerates in Charles's hand. Or there's at least... Oh, there's two uh, I do see two, two Incinerates. incinerates. Else. It looked like two incinerate, two blood ogre, but I know that can't be the case. So. <laughs> Probably not blood ogre. Uh, there's the a living ring takes out that shrine. I'm sure, Charles doesn't have about that. He's dealt with it all three games. And uh, let's see what Charles plucks here. I see a clear deck building mistake on Charles's part. He has different art for his lands. <laughs> Probably a added a land at the last minute. You know. <laughs> uh, no, he has no, two different. Two of them. What is this? This is crazy. So on Charles' deck list, we see a bunch of crossed out cards. We thought one of them was Lava Claw Reaches. Perhaps he cut... Actually, it, that, that's, I'm, I'm almost certain that's Lava Claw yeah. Reaches. So it's very possible he cut, cut black at last minute. It was like, I need four more mountains. All right, Hero of Oxford. Here, here comes Hero. Comes down. I need a hero. Oh, and there's this dismembered. dismembered. Yeah, so I, I think Charles' hand, as it is left, is uh, one hero, two incinerate. So, uh... Sam, pretty stable here. He's at 14 life. He uh, he has managed to weather the initial onslaught, deal with that shrine, and squatter hawk. Yep, he's playing hawks and pulling ahead here. Now, I th don't think it's unreasonable for Sam to assume that Charles has another hero because he has to figure why would Charles keep this hand? They see no Chandra's Phoenix. All he's seen is trying to burn rage. So a double hero hand is possible. Um, I mean, I would. He had, he had two land in his hand. He, he, right. he missed his third land drop. I, I, you know, having a, a, a hand with with a bunch of heroes and two land isn't particularly exciting, especially on the play. Right. All right. Yeah. Sam just passes back, so his uh, plays second like tectonic edge. So I'm guessing he probably has uh, probably has flash freeze in his hand, given that he did not play out a second hawk. Yeah, he does. I'm pretty sure. And now Charles has to decide: well, do I play this hero into his flash freeze, or you know, how else am I going to win this game? If you're in Charles's position, that's the question you're asking yourself. How do I come back from this? Like, what is my line of play? Do, how do I use these incinerates that I'm holding on? Right. To? I mean, he, realistically, he 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 can't try and you know burn past these hawks. He needs to try and just get uh, get his damage direct to Sam's face, which is pretty difficult to do when you know your opponent has you know most likely a bunch of timely reinforcements in their deck, and you you didn't manage to get you know much damage in to begin the game. Right, I mean, Sam's sitting at a pretty comfortable at 14 at this point. And Charles pretty deep in the tank on what his line of action is here. Now, he did draw another card this turn. We don't know what that is. But the rest of his hand is hero, double incinerate. I mean, it's... Hmm. I, I, I think you pretty clearly can't just play your hero here. Right. You just run into a flash freeze, and I think it's flash rose, and you're just, it's going to be almost impossible for you to win. But at the same time, I mean, you if you just if you just sit here with hero in your hand, you're just sort of bottlenecking yourself on on mana. You're bottlenecking yourself on plays. I mean, is your play really going to be like go incinerate you, incinerate you? I hope at some point you tap out. There's no reason for, even to, for 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 Sam to tap out. He can just sit here with mana open because 
you don't have a you don't have a clock. I think Charles is probably looking to draw out that flash freeze somehow, but it's going to be Incinerate's probably not going to do it and doesn't have any other action. So unless he drew say Ember Holler or something, you know, it's going to be hard to make that work. We don't know what Charles is. Fourth card. He's taking a, quite a bit of time for this decision. I'd imagine if there's a judge nearby, the last I'll probably step in at some point soon. I'm trying to see if I can find out what the last card in his hand is, but yeah, it's don't really have vision of his hand <laughs> here. It looks like oh, it looks like he's just playing the hero. Uh, yep. Oh, oh no. Oh, <laughs> looks about like it. he. That's sort of interesting because that's the sort of that's the sort of. Uh, minor little mind sort of game that you might play if you right. didn't have a hero. Right, right, right. right. Well, and do I want you to, to, you know, hold up your mana and not play stuff? But he actually has that hero. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it's like a bluff slash tell, you know, depending on how you look at it. All right, so down comes another hawk for Sandbar. And Sam will play a coast tapped and once again lead Flash's mana up. Oh, it looks like he, uh, Charlie has another mountain. Yeah, not so exciting. All right, there's a Grim Lava match, and maybe that will drop. Oh, oh it gets misstepped. Oh. That's ugly. Didn't even have to pay life for it. <laughs> and he stole his flash freeze mana up. Yep. So, yeah, it looks like that, that last card in Charlie's hand is, in fact, just a mountain. Yeah, nothing too exciting. All right, well, there's that mountain. All right, and there's the hero. <laughs> it comes up quick this time. Boom. He's like, maybe if I play it fast enough, you won't think about it. He's like, no, dude, it has here. haste. It's already in play. <laughs> I played it so fast, it had haste. Rock power turbo slug. <laughs> uh, all right, well, now Charles' hand is just too incinerates, and he's in a very bad position. He needs to draw, like, another hero or something here to have a chance. He needs to draw, like, a Bane Fire <laughs> and 10 land. Uh, Chandra Nalar would be a great draw. <laughs> New Chandra would be a pretty sweet card for him right here. All right, Jace Belair comes out for Sam. Yeah, ping, New Chandra. Ping. Kill your hawk, kill your hawk, kill you, kill you. I guess one more land, Chandra Blaze is something you could do. That uh, wouldn't even be that exciting. <laughs> down comes Squadron Hawk. So Sam is still going to pass with two men up, although I don't think he has Now he really wants another hero here. Yep. It is time for a hero. He needs to sing. I need a hero. He's not singing, I can tell. Yeah, somehow, somehow Charles doesn't strike me as the singing type. <laughs> Maybe if this was a karaoke bar, we could get him to do it. So, Gindy trying to figure out just how he can pull out of this one. All right, incinerate. Probably kill that Jace. Yep, yep. killing Jace. Jace He's gone. still facing down three... Three hawks that are going to kill him in short order. F five turn clock currently. If you add another hawk, I think that uh, turns it into. And one hawk's dead, I believe. Okay, so yeah, yeah, one hawk down. So five turn clock currently. If Sam draws a colony, that speeds it up significantly. If draws a Gideon, speeds it up significantly. Sam will serve in for three, dropping Charles down to eleven. And a preordained first sign of auspicious blue common. And he leaves a, uh, looks like, flash freeze on the top, land on the bottom. So he has another another counter spell. This, this game is very, very quickly slipping away from Charles Gindy. Oh, and a, another Jace for Sandbar. Pretty much exactly what he's looking for. He has, he's had almost everything but the Gideon, I think. And a Colonnade, too. The funny thing is he hasn't actually drawn timely reinforcements this game, yeah. and he has not actually had a point in which he was behind in <laughs> both creatures and life. Yeah, Charles uh, kept kind of a sketchy six-card hand on the play, and it did not pan out for him Was it well. six cards? Did he, had he mulligan? Yeah, he mulliganed down to Oh, six. okay. I, yeah, I, I would certainly keep that hand on six cards. Yeah, it looks like he kept two lands, two incinerate, two heroes on six cards. Gotcha. Maybe there's a shrine in there over one of the heroes. Mm. So Gindy in need of drawing something that probably isn't in his deck at this point. <laughs> yeah, look at Gindy's list. Not so hopeful. 
ember hauler. Not really, not really what he needs. He would need to, he would need to have like have boarded and come bust to deal with that social colony. And there's a flash freeze on that ember hauler. Yeah, yeah, yeah just Charles just concedes. So, so Sam Barth is the winner in round one. We'll move on to an impressive one and zero. While uh, Charles Gundy has a lot of work to do, uh, starting with a loss in this ten round yeah. standard open. Long round today. Six hundred one players being ten rounds of Swiss. And under the new plays marker point system, that's 21 extra points. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of participation points. Can I can I like 